G'day, in the brewery again. Just want to talk about Boat Rocker. If you haven't been there to their barrel room, I recommend it, you should. Just let me pour this beer and we'll get into it. Look at that. Is that not a beautiful looking beer? Cheers. And this is their Alpha Queen Pale Ale. But most people know Boat Rocker for the Ramjet. Let's be honest. It's famous Australian wide. Uh, if you haven't had it, you're really missing out. And look at that. It even looks sensational in the bottle. But why would I review that? Everyone's reviewed that. Don't be silly. Of course I'm going to review it. This is where things get serious. The Ramjet. They even have a dedicated Ramjet release day. It's celebrated across the nation. And it is. I'm not joking. If I can open this without killing myself, <laughs> opening a vein <laughs> will be right. Let's get this wax off. Or oh, you really don't have to take the wax off if you have the right bottle opener. I've let it warm up. It's been out of the fridge, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes. Bottle opener. Oh, straight away from the bottle. There's the whiskey, the Starwood whiskey. And, uh, oh, there's even a, oh, it's just like a, a, a dark fruit chocolate. Um, if you haven't had Starwood whiskey before, they're, they're an Australian whiskey company. Get on it. Uh, Boat Rocker get their barrels uh, fresh from them. They get to put their beer in them. Oh, it's just good. Let's get it in the glass. Now this bottle is probably big enough to nearly serve two people. It's 11.8%. It's a big beer. I might even save a bit for later. I can smell the whiskey from here. Big whiskey notes. And they've done a few different ones. There's a few different names. There's Roger Ramjet, there's the Ramjet, there's the Dramjet. And they've used bourbon barrels and, and, uh, and different barrels. And I'm pretty sure this one's a blend. Um, so they might do, you know, some in a certain, a Starwood whiskey and maybe a bit in a bourbon barrel, whatever. And then they blend it uh, at the end and bottle it. And uh, it's just, I haven't had a bad year of a Ramjet. If you haven't tried it, seriously, um, it's something to try at least once. More, I think you will. Once you've had it once, I think you'll have it more. Yeah, it's big, it's dark chocolate. Um, there's a slight a dark fruit there, and as I said, the whiskey. I've already let this warm up, so I don't have to wait too long. It's like a vanilla, it might be from the oak or, and, and oh, it's just, there's a vanilla up front. Um, of course the whiskey's there, but it's not as, um, the, the whiskey's more uh, in the aroma. I mean, it's there in the taste too, but it, when you smell it, you'd think it'd be right, right in your face. Mozzie. That's a good, at least medium to full body beer. Oh. It's that dark chocolate, a, a, a deep dark chocolate, a little bit of roast. Uh, I guess there's, there's a hint of coffee there too, but the coffee's not too forward, which is what I like. I think uh, the coffee notes can overpower sometimes. That's my opinion. I know some people like the big coffee. I rather the coffee way back. Um, and, you, and it's probably, I would say this isn't even coffee. It would be the roasted malts and things. That's a, that's, a, that's a guess from me, but there really isn't much I can say about this beer. There's a, a, nothing bad. It's just a sipper. It's, um, uh, when we were at the brewery the other week, uh, you know, I'd had it a few times before, the Ramjet, of course, but we'd had lunch and, you know, we'd had a few of their beers and this was the last on the list. 
And so, you know, you think your palate's a bit tired or, and you know, you've, you've had, a, I'd had a few, the, uh, the Fat Santa before this one and um, a few other, most of the ones on that second da uh, decadence flight were dark beers. But at the end, this still just popped. It, it, it stood out, it was sensational. Again, my wife Kelly, uh, she liked it. And, and I said it before, she doesn't even like these sort of beers. Um, it just, I think it's just because it's so balanced and there's nothing that punches you in the face too much. You know, as I said before, there's not too much coffee, there's not too much roast. The whiskey's balanced in there. Uh, they've blended it really well. Uh, besides the brewing and the aging, I think um, that's where this, a lot of the skill comes in, of getting a nice, good blend. Oh, caramel. Whiskey, oak. <laughs> it's just awesome. Like, you need to try this beer if you haven't tried it before. Um, I wish I had another to age. This is the 220 vintage. Um, you know, put them away for four or five years, and uh, they're only going to get better, you hope. But uh, this at the moment is awesome. Uh, I, I can't tell you exactly how long this has been aged for. Um, you would assume, you know, a good few months to a year maybe. I, I'm not exactly sure. Then as you get to the end, there's, again, it's the dark chocolate and that dark fruit. When I say dark fruits, I'm talking about raisins. Raisins in a good way, though. I should give a little read of what it says on their website. Um, our 220 vintage of Ramjet is a mix of barrels uh, from Starwood whiskey, some American oak, some French... Uh, and the result layers of complexity with perhaps a touch more vanilla on the palate. Not quite as the Roger, as much as the Roger Ramjet, uh, with red wine notes that were previously in the Starwood barrels before they had them, uh, making the presence known. And there is, there's that, uh, I think that it sits right at the back. And that's what, what I wasn't picking up before. There's that, um, I used to drink claret <laughs> when I was a youngster because dad used to have it at home. And um, there's that deep, right at the back, you can get some of that red wine presence through it. The whiskey is prominent as usual, giving way to rich malts, complex oak character, and light fruit and roast malt finish. Stored upright in a cool, dark place, Ramjet 220 will reward, will reward careful cellaring of at least five years. Over time, the whiskey will become less prominent and the barrel type more pronounced. The end result being just sublime. It's a barrel-aged imperial stout, 11.8%, and you get 330 mil in one of these little bottles. Uh, and that's all you need. Although, I tell you, <laughs> I could easily, uh, you'd have to be very careful. I could easily drink two, at least. Uh, I'm not going to tonight, though. If you haven't tried this beer, you need to. Let's get back to earlier. So that's the Ramjet. Of course, it's slightly different each year. They're barrel aged. That's what happens with these sort of beers, if you don't know. Um, but I've never had a bad one. I can't say I've had it every year, but I've had several of them, and they're always good. Um, there's a reason I sort of started with the Pale Ale. Because in a couple of days, I'm going to go be out at their brewery and uh, watch them brew a big batch of it. And they've been good enough to share a homebrew recipe for you all with me. Uh, for one of my brewery series videos, which I'm looking forward to. Uh, hopefully I'll get onto that in the next couple of weeks. As mentioned, they invited the family and I out for a day at the brewery. It was awesome. If you haven't been there before, I suggest you go. Uh, they just got, the, the, the beers are great. Uh, the venue's great. They've got a food truck. They had a Mexican food truck they happened to have there uh, the day we were here there and that was awesome we were quite happy i had the as i said the wife and kids and and they were quite happy to see the kids were happy that they could get their nachos you know so i had two tasting flights while i was there there was five in each uh, i don't want to call it regular but there was like the regular five beers that, that was sensational and then there was the, the the flight of decadence i think it was called with five of the the much bigger beers um oh and it was just even my wife kelly She's not into dark beers or barrel-aged beers, and uh, she wanted to take a bottle home of each one she tasted, and that's pretty rare. <laughs> the wife and I visit a lot of breweries 
and it's pretty rare when the wife, Kelly, I should say, says, I'd like to take home a bottle of this and a bottle of that and a bottle of that because that, that, that usually doesn't happen. She'll be stuck on the lagers and things like that. So that, I think that says a lot. I, I really think it does. Now, we had an awesome time there that day. Uh, I could have spent a few hours more. They also had, uh, what I should mention too, um, they do some uh, gin distilling. Uh, I did buy a pack of that and we'll do another video tasting on their gins. Uh, I did have a small taste while I was there. Um, and they, they were sensational. Uh, they had a bottle of rum, which I never got to taste. I, I, I forgot to ask if they had it behind the bar. I saw it on the shelf and went, oh. But I'll find out next time I'm there uh, for the brew day. I'll find out if I can get a little taste of that rum. Because uh, I am a bit of a rum fiend. <laughs> but so, it's not just the beer. they got the gin there. Everything, the food truck out the front. It, it really is good. And uh, I'm not just saying this because they invited us out there you know, gave us a few beers. Um, if you haven't been there, you really need to go and check it out. But this is the beer we should be excited about. This is the one we'll have a recipe for very shortly. It's a lovely pale ale. Wow, for Queen, oh, there's a bit more in the can. I can't leave that behind. But while most people know them for their ramjet, there's also a little up and comer that's been out for a few years now that's getting quite a bit of traction, and that's the Berliner Weiss uh, Miss Pinky, which you can find at most bottle shops. Uh, and it's, it's, it's a lovely little beer too. Um, and I'm not really into those fruit beers very often, as you probably know, but uh, I don't mind the odd uh, Miss Pinky, <laughs> the, the Rasba Berliner Weiss. It's a great beer. If you haven't tried those sort of beers before, I recommend you get your hands on one. Just before I finish up, last week I recorded a couple of other reviews of their beers. I'll whack them on the end of this, but I just want to thank them again for providing the family and I out there. We had an awesome day. Get out there. It's a nice little venue. You can see the barrels. You can see the, the ramjets and things aging in the barrels that you'll be drinking the next year uh, or hopefully sooner. So support your local breweries. Go and visit them. Do yourself a favour. Uh, you won't look back. Anyway, cheers. Thanks. We'll watch these other reviews. G'day. <laughs> we are here for another beer review. This is a Boat Rocker. I'm not going to mess around with this. Let's get into it. Boat Rocker Big Glove Hazy IPA. Contains water, barley, malt, wheat, hops, and yeast. Hazy, juicy beer made with Big Love. Well, I've just checked the website and it doesn't really give us any information on uh, the hops and stuff, but that's okay. We can ask and they'll probably let you know. But it is 6.2 um, canned in 375 mil cans. Yes, old school. That's always good, I think. I mean, oh, I say it now, I've got this glass. But I mean, when you've got a schooner glass and you pour one of the 331s into a glass, you get a little bit disappointed when it's this far from the top. You're never disappointed with more beer. Well, well I aren't. I ain't. I aren't. It's a hazy. Oh, it does say hazy. I just said that. That looks lovely. That really does. It's that little bit whiter from this side than it looks on camera. You know, like you want it. Whiter? Is that even a word? You know, it's that little bit paler and it's sort of with it, because I've got the sun there. I'm looking out to the road and with the sun coming in, it's, it's glow, it glows. They glow golden and it's just lovely. I can't pick what they are. There's not a huge aroma, to be honest. Maybe the, it's a bit cold. Oh, there's a hop there I, I'm not familiar with, I think. Yeah, I don't know what that aroma is. It's, it's there, but I don't know what it is. That's unusual for me. Let's have a sip. Mmm. That's nice, there's a nice, hang on, let me have another sip. It's very, very balanced. There's a nice bitterness there. It's not too bitter, don't expect a um, huge double West Coast IPA bitterness. They are, uh, hazies tend to be 
a little less bitter, um, you know, than the, than the classic IPAs. That's really nice. Um, I, I, I can say I had this on tap, and it was great. <laughs> so I'm a little bit familiar. That's great. It's um, it's what you'd expect. It's not. It's not too bitter. As I said before, it's balanced with the six percent. It's fruity. Oh, there's a little bit of citrus there. There's a little bit of uh, softer fruits there. It's it's very it's very nice. I think one of the major things I actually like about it. Oh, there it is. Sorry. Sometimes I'm talking and suddenly you get that flavour burst. And there it is there. I just got the, the flavours all soaking through. My mouth's starting to water. And I can taste it. I just, I, I forgot what I was just about to say because I got that flavour burst. I still can't pick the aroma hops. I bet it's something, something I probably know, but I just can't pick it. It's nice. Just the right level of bitterness. It's making my tongue, as I said before, my, my mouth water, my, my tongue, tickling my tongue. Back of your mouth there that you want in an IPA. I wish I knew the hops. I think I was told the hops. I just don't remember. There's a nice soft aroma. It's, it's not in a punch in the face aroma, but it's there. It's like a gentle fruit. A gentle fruit? <laughs> It's a gentle fruit. But you know what I mean? It's, it's, it's not a smash in the face. Soft fruits. Oh, that's nice though. Just enough bitterness there oh, to make it a hazy IPA. It's not an NIPA, but to make it a hazy IPA. That's really nice. Thanks again to Boat Rocker for supplying these beers for tastings uh, and for the great day we had my family there. G'day. <laughs> We're here for another beer review, another boat rocker, a Saison Belgian style farmhouse ale. I'm looking forward to this one. I don't think I had this on tap the other day. I think this might be a different one. Look at that, that's bright, happy, dancing. <laughs> I do say it a million times, but it's much lighter and brighter from my side of the camera. Ah, oh, lovely. What a lovely aroma. There's sometimes um, I go and get the aroma from a Zazon and I'm not very impressed. That's just lovely. Um, without even sipping it, my mind's going, that is going to taste good. Wow. Oh, nice bit of bitterness there. I've said before, when I'm doing reviews, I often look away. It's just, it just, because I'm looking straight at the camera, I, I can't concentrate properly. If I'm looking away, I sort of, uh, you know, I look at the sky or the trees out the front. When, you, when you're in a nice place, you know, when you're in a good place. That's lovely. That's lovely. I can't even <laughs> explain. It's just like it should be. It's nice and dry. I was going to say it's cold and wet, <laughs> but it is. It's, it's a, quite a warm afternoon here today. I might be sweating, but uh, it's perfect. It's a perfect beer for a, summer, a summer's afternoon. And it's done right. And, and what I mean by that is sometimes I have these, um, oh, I shouldn't just say any Belgian beers because there's so many different styles. But uh, like Saison's, and they kind of feel dirty. 
I mean, they've got that aroma, um, but there, there's a, there's a, the, the farmhouse is sort of too much and it tastes like a farmhouse, if that makes sense. This is a farmhouse, but it's how it should be. It's bright, it's cold, <laughs> cold, I keep saying cold, but it is, it's just bright, dry, it's, it's nice and cold. I like a, a Saison cold. Um, there's enough bitterness there, the right amount of bitterness. That's really lovely. Um, and without detracting from it, I think if you, have not, uh, um, if you haven't had a, a Saison that you liked yet, try this. Um, it's got everything that it needs to in spades. But there's also a familiar, a familiar, hang on, I've just tried to say that five times. There's also a familiarity, oh, I still couldn't say it, um, as a bright, dry, uh, crisp lager, uh, if that makes sense. That's really nice, really, really nice. And I tell you what, I am picky in my saisons. Um, of course, it depends what you're looking for in one. But this is, this is really good. It's refreshing, um, dry, but it has the, the, the complexity that a Saison should have uh, without it being overpowering. It doesn't taste like a champagne like some, you know, some Saisons do. I think that's enough for the review because I want to sit here and relax and just sip on the last of it because it's really nice. I'll see you in the next one. Mm. It's not whiny, which I really like. Some are whiny. It's not. But I tell you what, though, I had one of their Saisons that was aged in two different barrels. Oh, let me, I think one was a wine barrel and one might have been a, uh, like a bourbon or scotch barrel or rum barrel. Oh, holy moly, that was good. That was in one of their flights. If you go there now, oh, when I was there at least, it was in the flight of uh, decadence. It was the clear one at the front. Put a picture up now. I made a mistake. It was a Berliner Wise, but it was double barrel aged, 12 months in French oak and three months in a Starwood whiskey cask. It was lovely. That was something special. Actually, every beer in that <laughs> flight of decadence was something special. Cheers. I might start selling these bottle openers. <laughs> I'm going to put some more in. Look at that. You won't be disappointed.